I think we need to stop giving dood roti. It's very common in India, perhaps not elsewhere in the okay. world. Uh-huh. Um, but in India, it's extremely common, particularly because we have a large vegetarian population. Mm. Um, abroad and internationally, meats are way more uh, common, mm. and that is actually the most, uh, you know, the most suitable ingredient for dogs. They okay. are meant to be on meat-based diet. Welcome to another episode of the brand called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Our episodes go live at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. every day. I am your host Ashutosh Garg, and today I am delighted to welcome someone who really, really loves dogs. Rashi Kachru, Rashi, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Rashi is the managing partner of Doggy Dabbas, and she has done a course in canine nutrition. So, Rashi, let's talk about Doggy Dabbas. Tell me about what made you start this venture. Um, so did I? It started because of my own dog. My own dog was eating kibble. Um, I was in the UK. I came back to India and mm. put on a lot of weight. He was eating kibble. And the vets kept telling us to keep him on table nutritionally, etc. But I just felt like we don't eat like that. We don't eat the same thing every day. I like variety in my life, so I thought, let me just do some research and see if I can make any positive changes. So that's when I studied about canine nutrition, and I realized that okay, look, there's certain things that somebody needs to take into account. You can't just feed your dog chicken and rice and call it a balanced meal or a fresh meal. Mm-hmm. So that's where it started. I changed his diet. There was such a massive change in his weight, the way his coat looked, um, all of those things, and that's exactly how it started. Because when guests came home, they said, uh, "You know, can we get similar diet plans?" Because all our dogs are facing these wow. kind of issues, mm-hmm. uh, and also they didn't believe it was the same dog. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's how it started, basically, just by people saying that, "Can we have something similar for our own dogs?" Amazing, amazing. You know, so I mean, we don't have a dog now, but when I was very young, my parents used to have a dog, and you know, dogs end up eating whatever they want. I mean, you have vegetarian dogs and you got non-vegetarian dogs, but what is so unique about nutrition for dogs uh, that the common people don't know about? I think it's the same thing that our like hum- the human industry went through, mm-hmm. right? Eating healthy, knowing what's good for your body, knowing and understanding that nutrition can actually prevent a lot of health issues. I think that knowledge base started from us, from people realizing that if we ourselves start eating healthy, we tend to have less health problems in the future. And the same thing has trickled down into obviously man's best friend. Um, and that knowledge is increasing today as well. Okay, and you know, uh, pet foods. From all these big giants is a huge business all over the world. Uh, how or what you do, what you are doing different from pick, taking out food from a bag? Right. So exactly, the nutritional values are different. Um, the thing with me is, I want to be, I want you to be able to feed fresh, but why can't you take it out of a bag and feed fresh? Mm-hmm. Not everybody has the time to uh, cook for their dogs. You know, deal with. Twenty to hundred kgs of meat on a regular basis. It's not easy. Uh, it's cumbersome. It's time-consuming. So I wanted to actually find that middle ground that you can mm-hmm. still ha- have, like, feed your dog in a convenient manner, but that doesn't mean you're giving up on that fresh aspect. So everything that we do is preservative-free. We use technologies available, like advancements in scientific technology, to be able to preserve the food without preservatives. Okay. So that you can still feed fresh, and still you can take it out of the bag, but without all the nasties. So we don't use things like fillers, additives, uh, flavorings. Everything is from all natural ingredients. Mm. That's how we are doing. Very interesting. And you know, uh, for all the people who have pets, and I know most of my family members do have pets. What are the first signs to look out for uh, to understand that my pet is not feeling well? You know, um, as pet parents, we know our dogs best. I think the first sign is just a personality change, uh, lethargy, 
uh, not being themselves, not eating their meals, uh, leaving their meals. Um, everybody knows their dog's personality inside out. So if you start seeing something different that, oh, my dog used to come and sit up on the bed with me. Now he's showing a resistance to jumping up on the bed. There's small telltale signs that you as pet parents can pick up. Don't take it lightly. Um, that's the way I am. And that's the advice I give as well. That if you are feeling that there's a slight change, that perhaps your vet might say, Are, it's nothing. It's mm-hmm. nothing. Explore it. Give yourself that own peace of mind because you know your dog best. So these are a couple of signs. Lethargy, laziness. Uh, change in personality. Obviously, there are obvious signs like vomiting, stomach rumbling, but I'm just talking about signs that perhaps could be missed. Mm. Interesting. And, uh, you know, you did mention a little bit about how important canine nutrition is, but I'd like to understand from you, you know, when you start planning a meal for um, a dog, what goes into planning such a meal? So what we do is we take the dog's uh, blood reports, we take the dog's history, their weight, their age, their activity level, whether mm-hmm. they're spayed, neutered, do they have any allergies. Um, we look at the dog as a whole. So it's a very holistic approach. We don't just say, hey, open this bag of food and, and you know, you're all good right. to go. Um, there's a lot of other aspects that we actually try to incorporate as well in terms of the content that we make available to our consumers, whether it's mm-hmm. training, whether it's things like animal communication, boarding your being able to board your dogs in a safe location in case you're, you know, in case you have COVID or something like that. So there are things that we believe in and like telling you that, look, this is a whole kind of wellness um, method of looking after your dog. And it's not just feed your dog and that's about it. Mm-hmm. And what kind of foods uh, are good for dogs and what kind of foods are completely unacceptable? I think we need to stop giving dood roti. It's very common in India, perhaps not elsewhere in the world. Uh Um, But in India, it's extremely common, particularly because we have a large vegetarian population. Mm. Um, Abroad and internationally, meats are way more uh, common. Mm. And that is actually the most, uh, you know, the most suitable ingredient for dogs they okay. are meant to be on meat-based diet mm. of keeping dogs vegetarian as much as possible mm. you should know that in case you are keeping a dog vegetarian you can't do it naturally mm. there are essential amino acids that are missing in vegetarian diets that need to be artificially supplemented okay. so that's where i stand avoid vegan and veg diets unless you're doing proper supplementation and you're being guided by a professional and just stick to, uh, you know, meat-based diets. And remember that, yes, they are our babies, but they are also a different species and we need to do our best to provide them with the best. Correct, correct. So what you're really saying is that uh, meats are very critical for dogs. And uh, for people who are vegetarian or vegan, uh, supplementary, uh, you know, vitamin supplements, etc. need to be given then. Yes, absolutely. Though we do have a lot of vegetarian clients who in fact completely understand the fact that they don't want to keep their dogs vegetarian and vegan. That is their personal choice. And then they see a difference in their dog. Or like like a company like mine, like Fresh Meals, for example, a product that we make, Mm. it's perfect for vegetarian pet parents. You just tear it open and pour it out. You don't have to store it in the fridge. It's ready to eat technology. I have people who store it outside their home. You Mm -hmm. know, when they're extremely strict vegetarians, they store it outside their home. Their dog goes outside, eats and comes back in. Okay. So there's always a way. Um, and like I said, just we just need to remember that they are a different species. And we need to provide them with what they require, not what we think they require. Mm. And, you know, what got you so passionate about, with, with, about dogs? Oh, I've always loved dogs. Uh-huh. Uh, I wanted to be a vet when I was uh, younger. I actually went on to kind of study higher level biology, etc. But when it came down to the actual cutting and I just couldn't do that. So <laughs> I said, uh, maybe uh, in my head, like when I started Doggy Dabbas, I said, you know, maybe this is the best thing for me because I can prevent the issue from arising mm. rather than having to deal with it at such a later stage. Amazing. You know, you remind me of myself. I mean, I'm much, much older, but I remember when I was in the early 70s when my after school, my parents want me to become a doctor. Mm-hmm. And I used to hate the dissecting. Yes. 
So I used to end up taking a ro- you know, earthworm and roasting it because I didn't know how to dissect it. You know. <laughs> okay, very interesting. So you know, you spoke about uh, uh, the food interventions to keep a dog healthy. What about medical interventions like vaccinations and other health-related subjects? I think the way forward is most definitely a mix between allopathy and homeopathic treatments, mm. natural Ayurveda treatments for dogs. Mm. So yes, vaccinations are important. There's a lot going on in the world. You see, we don't know enough about canine nutrition and canine wellness the way we know about humans as well. So when we're talking about something like vaccination, if we look internationally, mm. there are things Cytotests tests where they suggest that you test your dog prior to revaccinating your dog. These kind of tests are still expensive and uncommon in India. So, and also the virus loads in India, like rabies, etc., are much higher. Mm. Speak to your veterinarian, follow their advice. If you're in doubt, um, you know, uh, save up and get that title test done, is mm. what I would say, at least once, so that you know where you're going with that. You don't have to keep doing it. Ideally, yes, you do. But hopefully, as time goes on, we can bring those costs down and have those things available. Very interesting. But yes, there are certain medical interventions that you just cannot avoid. And I would not suggest this whole uh, never vaccinate your dog and don't do all that in a place like India because we're not ready for that just yet. Um, so take your precautions and, and be wise. Very well said. And, you know, uh, Rashi, tell me the size of the dog or the breed of the dog, I would imagine they have very different nutrition needs. Absolutely not. They are genetically the same. I see. So it's like saying, does a smaller human being, do I have a smaller human being? Can they have a different genetic, I mean, different nutritional requirement to a larger dog? The only thing that changes is our daily calorie intake. Um, So that is what particularly changes for dogs as well. Mm -hmm. not breed specific, what happens and why you see breed specific product, um, packaged food. I guess that's what's con- uh, confusing to consumers who are not aware when they see, you know, food for golden retriever, food for German shepherd, they're the same size. Why do they have different things? Mm. When you read traditionally, it's the same product. It's just that the kibble is actually shaped differently so that it's easier for your dog to chew on. So a Labrador will talk, will will kind of choke if you give them too small a piece. Mm-hmm. So you have to change the sizes of dry food accordingly. Okay. So that's where that breed specific segregation is coming in. It's not mm-hmm. nutritionally at the back of the packet when you look at, is my Labrador actually getting a completely different meat plan to my pug? No, that's not what happens. Amazing. And, you know, uh, for human beings, again, there is a, there's a calorie chart. You know, 2,400 calories is what should be consumed or whatever. If you want to lose it, drop to 1,400 calories. Uh, would you also work on the calorie chart for dogs? Yes, absolutely. So um, our meals and our products have feeding guides based on their weight. So the mm. calorie differs as for their weight. Mm. So all of that mentioned and when the consumers start using our products, they're kind of, and we're happy to guide as well in case there's any confusion. Like I said, you know, with Labradors, for example, I have some Labradors who get uh, barely an hour of exercise a day, whereas I have others who will go for a minimum of a four kilometer walk a day. So their calorie intake will start to differ. So that's where our extra guidance will sort of help you. But yes, a general rule of thumb is mentioned on our product. Any any interesting anecdotes you have with, uh, you know, without giving names, of course, of uh, dogs who have come to you and will completely become well Oh, absolutely. I think um, there was a Labrador who uh, visited me at the age of one mm-hmm. and severe case of hip dysplasia, extremely overweight and with the best recommendation to put him to sleep because the quality of life would have been terrible in the future. And um, this was about uh, seven years ago, I want to say. That dog is alive today, still on my diet, doing fine, absolutely, touch wood. Uh, amazing pet parent for the kind of dedication that they have shown over these years. Mm. He's vacation free uh, just by weight management, just by natural supplements. So yeah, it is possible. And I think that for me is amazing that I could give somebody Mm. um, so much time with their dog. I'm not saying it's only because of me. That's not a guarantee that I'm giving. But this genuinely happened. It was genuinely a situation that I faced as a business owner and the consumer faced as well. 
Mm. And I'm so glad if it wouldn't have worked, they wouldn't have been with me today. But they are, and and I love I love the dog. Amazing. And what leads to obesity at at such a young age? This incorrect diet. It was absolutely just a case of incorrect diet. That's it. Which meant that no exercise and and poor food. Yes, it was just in completely the wrong type of food that was supposed to be served mm-hmm. to the dog, mm-hmm. and. because of that and because of the excess weight gain they could not exercise the dog so much so 1 kg of excess weight on a dog is equal to 10 kg of excess weight on a human it puts the wow. same amount of strain on your dog's joint so we have to be really careful with weight management particularly with larger breeds who are susceptible to issues like hip dysplasia and joint related conditions very interesting and uh, my last question on doggy dabba before i move to the next part uh, Are you also catering to non-canine pets? Yes, we have cat uh, treats as well. We haven't launched our cat food yet, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But yes, we're catering to cats as well. Okay, and any other pets other than dogs and cats? No. No, my husband keeps asking me to come out for something for humans. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not something. He probably will do a very good job of uh, making sure human beings also lose weight. You know, maybe <laughs> you can start it into a different one called you know human being dabbas or something. You know. <laughs> So tell me one more thing I wanted to ask you, which is that how are millennials and Gen Zs, and you're probably in the same category of a millennial, um, how are they uh, adapting to keeping pets and to looking after their pets? So I think it's just very clear. Like earlier, everybody was pet owners. Hmm. Now everybody's pet parents. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's that shift from owning a pet. to actually going through the whole parenting route you know understanding that there are lots of aspects of bringing up a dog uh straight from training to nutrition to grooming to vet visits so i think that shift is what's uh, changing and i think the millen- like millennials and gen z also want to consume a lot more information mm-hmm. they want decisions after they gain knowledge on the situation mm-hmm. So, in terms of the type of marketing that we're doing, we really want to put out a lot of information out there, mm-hmm. so that we can also guide people to make the right decisions for their dogs. Very interesting. So, Rashi, I'm now going to move to the next segment, which is some questions for you personally. My first question is that: What would you say are three key milestones in your life or your career? Uh, in my life, I'll say um, first is when I went to boarding school. I was sixteen, fifteen, sixteen years old, and my parents uh, sent me to a boarding school in England. Mm-hmm. And I think that I lived a very sheltered and protected life while I was in India, as most uh, children do. But when I went there, it was a totally different experience. It really brought me out of my shell. It really showed me the world. um and i think it really molded me um to who i am today and it did build my confidence so i think that is one very key milestone in my career i think the other two are very important um uh, my uh, the first is when we um, launched our chicken jerky which is the black packet in shelf stable retail packaging and being able to supply that to dogs all over india um i think it just changed the game for me as a business um and change the market as well mm-hmm. uh, third would have to be the launch of our latest product fresh news which is our ready to eat technology which we launched during covid as a way to adapt and try and fit in you know um, we were dealing in frozen food prior to um, covid and with the logistics lines and frozen food lines completely destroyed at my volume it became very difficult to kind of continue with that we had a retail store in mumbai we had to shut it down but we still had clients wanting our products mm-hmm. so being able to to switch um accept the new technology and start pushing that not only then to mumbai but to the rest of india that was our advantage and i think these are the three milestones fantastic and as a business owner what are some of the core values you believe in because your clients are very different yes um honesty um both with consumers and with business associates and um, an ethical company and just i just want to do good business mm-hmm. that's it. For, for all around I, as a consumer and if you're doing like a uh, business with us and you're not a consumer i just want you to be happy satisfied and know that we're coming from a good honest place fantastic 
and uh, you know yeah rashi you are very very early stage of your business and young but from where you stand today what does success mean to rashi having the power to be able to make a difference and actually using that power to make a difference in a positive way very nice That's Very nice. And and a follow up question to you would be who or what inspires you? Cases like I just told you about about the Labrador. Um, another case was somebody's dog did not go up their stairs for three years. By the time they met me, um, and they were really upset. Um, and we changed the diet, and the dog started going up the stairs, jumping on the bed, and they called me crying on the phone, saying, "I cannot even believe that you've given me my dog back." These are the things that inspire me. Mm, fantastic. My next question to you is that if you, Rashi, were a role model to millions of children who closely followed you and your life choices, what is the one thing you would change in yourself? I don't know. Actually, I think I'm doing a pretty good job right now. I don't want to change anything. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. My next question, and I've got time for two more questions for you. My next question is on failure, and I've often said that parents in India. Don't teach children it's okay to fail. You're always told come first in class, go to the head of the line, etc., etc., and that manifests itself in our behavior patterns. So, you and I live in Delhi. Three cars allowed on a traffic light. Nine will be present. Why? Because my car must be first, etc., etc. Yet we fail. So my question to you, Rashi, is: What have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes? I think mistakes are the absolute best learning that you can ever have, um, and I've made some pretty big ones in mm-hmm. my life. From uh, you know plugging in a machine that I got from the US straight into a port and having it blow up <laughs> yeah. to having uh, a whole lot of incorrect uh, printed packaging, but it's those mistakes that have I think made me stronger mm-hmm. and. Allowed me to be in a situation where I know for sure I won't be making those mistakes again, and uh, it's only a real failure if you don't get up, right? If you get up and you get going, you haven't failed yet. Well said, well said. And my last question to you: As uh, someone who's running such a fascinating business for dogs, and dogs are such amazing pets for all of us, what would your advice be to someone who's getting their first? Pet. Do a ton of research before you get the dog. Um, unfortunately, in India, we tend to be a little reactive. Mm-hmm. We start researching after issues crop up. We start researching about having a dog after the dog has come home, and then we're suddenly scrambling to buy beds and pee pee pads, and we don't know what's happening. If you're in case of adopting a puppy or in case of adopting an adult dog, mm-hmm. suddenly a rush to find a suitable trainer. Mm-hmm. Be proactive. Do your research beforehand. Gain knowledge, um, and it can be a dream to take care of the dogs. Fascinating, Rashi. Thank you so much. I mean, my conversation with you has given me such an amazing insight into keeping dogs as pets. I mean, you know, what an amazing thing you are doing for them. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.